Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. I get asked a lot in our Discord about how to tackle the meta product architecture and design round. There really isn't much information out there on how to approach this. Well, don't worry, because today I'm going to give you a full breakdown of this round and what's expected of you. In the interest of having this information be concise and understandable, I'm actually going to break this video into two parts. The first will be a breakdown of the interview itself, and then the second video will be a walkthrough of a real interview question and how you might approach it. Before we get started, I just want to take a few seconds to shout out our channel members who are generously supporting the channel. Thank you for your ongoing support, and it really means a lot to me that you would choose to patronize the channel. If you want to support the channel, then you can click the like button, subscribe, and optionally become a channel member if you really want to and support my work. Okay, enough chit chat, let's dive in. Let's start with a high level overview of the product architecture interview and what you need to know about it. This interview is the system design equivalent for those who are interviewing for a software engineer product role. It's important to understand which interview you're doing because the expectations and evaluation criteria for both are very different. Both interviews will have you designing a system, but the product design interview is focused more on the architecture and user experience of a system, whereas the system design interview is focused on the scalability aspect. Which one should you do? Usually, you have the option to ask your recruiter to switch the type of the interview, so you need to decide which one you want to do, product architecture or whether or not you want to do the system design. If you have back-end experience and you're, that's predominantly your experience, then most likely you want to do the system design. If you've been working as a full-stack engineer, then most likely the product architecture interview will be easier for you. Though, you may actually opt to do the system design interview because online there's a lot more resources for system design than there are for product architecture. This means it's actually easier to prep for system design because you have more things to read up on. But what does this all mean in practice? Let's look at an example and think about how the two interviews might be different for the same question. And for this one, we're going to go with the example of designing a basic version of Instagram. In a systems design round, you'll be interested in making sure the system can handle millions or billions of users. How might you shard your data to make it data retrieval efficient? You'll identify points of failure in the system, mitigate them, and what services you'll need and how they'll interact with each other. Of course, this is a massive oversimplification because we aren't really interested in system design here. It's just to get an idea of what the system design concepts are and what they accept. For product architecture, forget everything related to scalability. It isn't important whatsoever, and your interviewer will actually steer you back on track if you're talking about these topics. The core focus of a product architecture interview is how you design the APIs and the user experience of your app. This is really akin to the work you do as a full stack engineer, how you will design the system to provide a smooth and enjoyable experience for the end user. How will the UI be structured? How will you handle fetching data from the server? And how will you deal with different client types, etc, etc. Now, I think the last thing I want to mention is that similar to the system design interview, you cannot fake it until you make it. It's very clear and obvious to interviewers who actually has experience and who just read about this online or watched a YouTube video like the one you're watching now. This doesn't mean by any means that you cannot pass the interview with a basic understanding, but do know that this means that you will likely be down leveled because of it. Remember, the design round and the behavioral round determine your level. So instead of a binary pass or fail, you have to answer the question as Meta would expect an engineer for whatever role you're interviewing as to answer it, right? If you were interviewing for an E5, you have to answer like an E5, otherwise you might get down leveled to an E4. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, now let's actually do a deep dive on the components of this interview and what's expected at each step. So that was the difference between the two interviews at a very high level. Now let's actually deep dive in what, into what you're expected to do in this interview. The first part, and this is similar to a system design interview, is that you need to explore the problem and gather the requirements. You're going to have to ask some clarifying questions to understand what the interviewer is looking for and understand the functional and non-functional requirements. Pretty standard. After this, similar to what you would do in a system design interview, you want to do some basic back of the envelope calculations. What is the expected queries per second, potentially database size, and some bandwidth considerations. You don't really have to go too in depth here. Just want to do a little bit to get a sense of what's going to be flowing in and out of your system, but you don't really have to go as in depth as you would for a system design. 
Now, here's where we start to diverge a bit from system design, and there is some overlap. The first thing you want to do is obviously define your data models for storing and accessing data. You don't have to go really in depth here. For example, the popular question of designing Twitter, where you need to actually set up the IDs for your database in a way that allows them to both store the ID and the timestamps so that you can efficiently retrieve things. Things like this are not really a consideration you want to make here. You still want to define all of the data models for your system, but you don't have to go really in depth about like super efficient information retrieval. You just want to know the general models, you know, user model, uh, post model, uh, photo model, and how they all tie together. You don't need to go super in depth in defining all the metadata for each of the models. It's more of just, okay, these are the basic models. This is how they're going to tie into each other. This thing will join here. This will join that, right? So that's the first step. The second part, and you do this for a system design interview as well, is what APIs are you going to be defining to actually interact for, uh, with the client and the server, right? And you know what endpoints you're going to need, what are they going to be get, post, patch, these sort of things. And here you actually do want to give a little bit more detail and talk about this more than you actually would in a system design interview. There, it's a bit of like a hand wave, like oh, we want like just this thing and that thing, and these are going to do some very quick calculations and then you go to the next step right but here you actually want to go and give a lot of detail on the actual apis themselves the next thing similar to the apis you need to talk about what the request and the response payloads are going to be for your apis what is it going to take in at each time what is it going to return what are the http status codes that you need to be returning uh, what happens when something goes wrong what are you going to return what happens when something goes right what are you going to return how are you going to handle this uh, these are all need to be things that you need to consider uh, when talking about the api section next thing pretty standard, you're still designing a system here. So you need to talk about uh, what components are actually going to go into your system. Okay, you're going to probably going to need a database. Are you going to use SQL versus NoSQL? Are you going to do everything in memory? Um, are you going to need some sort of queue for processing whatever your system is designing? Um, do you need some sort of worker machines to execute things? Stuff like this, you're just going to draw your pretty standard uh, diagram. You know, you're going to have your boxes, which is going to point to things. You're going to have your database. Uh, you're going to be fetching from it. You know, th the standard kind of design um, round stuff. And pro tip, use the app that I'm using now, which is Excalidraw. It's super easy to draw stuff. Uh, it's most likely what you'll be using at Meta because an engineer at Meta actually designed it and built it. So they'd really like to use this one. So if you haven't been familiar with Excalidraw, then familiarize yourself with it because you'll most likely use it for your interview. The next thing you might want to consider is, okay, what's the UI layout? What's going to happen when you interact with this part of the component? You know, are you going to fire off, um, you know, one of your API um, requests here? What's going to happen when you do this? What's going to happen when you do this uh, thing here? Da, 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 da. How everything's going to tie together in the context of your system. Obviously, we don't have a live question in front of us, so it's hard to give exact details of what this should look like. But you do want to kind of give a general sense of, OK, this is what the UI is going to look like. This is going to be one part here. And then I don't know if you click this thing, it's going to fetch data from the API using you know this endpoint that we defined earlier. And then the data is going to be populated here, blah, 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 things like that. Obviously, we don't have a live example. Can't give you too much detail at the time. But again, UI layout is something you'll want to consider. Also, you want to talk about the user behavior in the app. How are they going to use your app? How are they inter going to interact with it? And how this might affect your design decisions and also the client and server interactions, right? If the user does this, what are you going to do on the client side? What are you going to do on the server side if you need to get some data? How are you going to fetch that data? How are you going to make sure it's a good experience for the user? These are all things that you need to consider as part of your design. Obviously, as you're going along, you need to be talking about the uh, trade-offs here. You know, I chose to use this database instead of this database because this database will allow me to query the data faster and that will give my user a better experience. Or I chose this technology because it's easier to fetch large quantities of data um, and that will give my user a better experience. So again, discussing trade-offs as you go, it's a system design interview. There's no right answer. You just need to justify what you're doing and tying it back to um, the question prompt. So that's a very high level overview of what's kind of expected from you in the product architecture. As you can see, it's a lot more focused on kind of the the experience of the app as a whole, right? We don't care about, oh, we need um, 
availability regions to make sure that we can handle failovers in case of a database crash or how are we going to replicate the data? How are we going to shard it? You don't talk about this stuff, right? It's it's a lot different than a standard system design interview. And you're really more focused on the user experience. How are they going interact, to interact with your app? What are they going to do? How are you going to fetch data? How are you going to make sure that the user has a good experience? So now that we understand this, let's actually go to the evaluation criteria here. And this will actually tell us how we need to answer these questions to give the interviewer the signal that they're looking for. All right, promised. Now let's talk about the evaluation criteria. It's actually very similar to a system design interview, but let's just mention it nonetheless. The first part is how well do you gather the requirements for the system and translate these into the components needed for the system and account for the constraints provided. You know, this is usually a back and forth with the interviewer where you'll chat with them, you'll understand what they want you to do, what are the requirements, functional and non-functional for the system, and you'll need to take these into account when actually designing the thing. Next is the design. So obviously you're gonna be evaluated on the design of your system. Did you design it in a way that met all the requirements that you gathered in the first step? Did you make sensible decisions when choosing the components of your system? And were you able to tie your decisions back to how the user will use and experience your product? Did you even take the user and their interaction with the product into account when designing your system? The next step is understanding. How well do you actually know what you're talking about? Can you deep dive into certain topics? Can you discuss trade-offs or technologies from a first-hand experience? Or is all of your knowledge from a resource like Grokking or this video, for example? Do you know and understand the challenging parts of designing a system like this? And do you approach these challenges and work around them? And how do you foresee and mitigate common points of failure? The next one is your communication. Can you clearly, concisely, and confidently present your design and justify your decisions? Can you articulate what you're doing, what decisions you're making, trade-offs being taken in a way that conveys a mastery of the subject? Do you listen to and incorporate feedback from the interviewer in your design, or do you kind of just shoot from the hip and do whatever you want? So those are the four broad criteria pillars that you'll be evaluated on. The next thing I wanna talk about is kind of building off of this evaluation criteria, and let's give a brief overview of how certain levels might approach the problem and answer it, just so you have a sense of how each level should basically be answering these questions. Now that we have a rough idea of what the evaluation criteria are, let's quickly explain approximately what the interviewers are looking for at the most common levels. And I'm only going to cover E4, E5, and E6 here. At the E4 level, the basic expectation is that you get a working solution up and answer the question. And you can basically choose a design and talk through all the components required and piece together something that works end to end. Your design will likely have some holes in it, but it's largely functional and fulfills the requirements given. You'll discuss some trade-offs at a basic level, but there really won't be too much of a deep dive in any particular area. Typically, E4s in this category have little to no experience actually designing these kinds of products. For this reason, their knowledge tends to be superficial and lacking any sort of deep understanding. And that's fine, it's enough to pass at this level, but not for the more senior levels. Now, let's talk about E5. Okay, E5. At E5, you'll again be designing a working system, but instead of slapping things together and dealing with individual components on an ad hoc basis, you can present your design to demonstrate a coherent story of how everything will fit together and ultimately play into the user experience with the product. At this level, you won't really have any significant gaps in your design. You'll be able to identify the critical components of the system and be comfortable and willing to deep dive into any of these components where necessary to the overall design or when the interviewer prompts you. You'll also proactively discuss trade-offs for each component and tie these back into the end user and how this will affect their experience with the product. At this level, you'll probably have extensive hands-on experience that you can pull from to assist you in your design, and this in turn will come off as more natural as these are problems you've solved in the past and you can draw into real-world experience. At the E6 level, you'll need to create a design that thoroughly and 
decisively addresses a wide range of the key aspects of the problem. You'll also be able to deep dive into each of them and make well-informed decisions for each component. When you're designing the system, an E6 engineer will understand upfront what the potential pitfalls and corner cases are with their design. They're gonna communicate these clearly to the interviewer and also make provisions for them later in the design to cover them. The E6 engineer will also take into account the future maintainability and extension of the system and make decisions which allow for future updates without needing to drastically refactor or redesign parts of the system. The E6 engineer will also be able to convincingly speak through all of the trade-offs they make, what bottlenecks exist in the system, and ultimately how all of their design decisions will impact the end user and their experience with the product. All of this is done typically without prompting from the interviewer and the candidate should know from experience which areas are worthy of deep diving into and which areas are not. Okay, so I will cut the video there. As promised, this video will be two parts, the second coming out sometime soon, where we'll cover a real question and some of the topics you'll want to discuss when approaching your design. As always, thank you for watching to the end. Make sure to leave a like and a subscription to the channel to help me grow. If you'd like to join the Discord, then there's a link in the description below, which will take you there. If you really enjoy my content, you can choose to also become a channel member and unlock some extra perks for your monetary support. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.